Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math Valentine's Day Special. Today I'm going to be discussing a problem that involves a seemingly random guess. So behind me I've got doors 1, 2, and 3. Behind two of these doors are frogs. Just completely normal frogs, no magical, no magical abilities whatsoever. But behind one of these doors is your very own Prince or Princess Charming. And if you select the correct door, you'll get to go on a date with Prince or Princess Charming. So I'm going to ask my assistant, Zach, which door would you, would you think hides Prince or Princess Charming? All right, Zach has chosen door number two. And so I know which door conceals the Prince or Princess Charming, and I know which two doors conceal frogs. So at this point, Zach's chosen door number two. I'm going to open up one of the frog doors. So in this case, I'll open up door number three to reveal a frog. So at this point, I'm going to ask Zach, would you like to stick with your original choice of door two, or would you like to switch to door number one? And Zach might be thinking, well, it's either behind door one or door two. It's a 50-50 chance. But that's counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive, but that is incorrect. It's actually always in your favor to switch your door. And so this problem actually comes from a game show from the 60s and 70s called Let's Make a Deal. It's named after the host, Monty Hall. And this problem came up on the game shows, whether to stick or to switch. And it stumped mathematicians and number theorists for decades, but we've come up with a pretty easy way to explain why you should always switch. And the easiest way to understand I've found is to simply create a data table of all of the possibilities. So over here I've got my two charts. This looks like a ton of information, but stick with me here. Over here is a table describing all of the possible outcomes if you stay with your original choice. So we've got door number one here is what you originally chose. And the prince or princess is either behind door one or door two or door three. And all of the other doors in red here conceal frogs. So you've chosen door number one originally. I'm going to open up one of the two frog doors. Let's say I open up door number three. And I'll ask you if you'd like to stick or switch. And you stay with your original choice of door one. This time, it results in a win. And in scenario number two, you've originally chosen door number one. I have to open up the only other frog door, door number three in this case. And I'm going to ask you to stick or switch again. It doesn't matter, you're always gonna stay and it results in a loss this time. Now in our third scenario, you've originally chosen door number one. I'll open up door number two, which conceals the only other frog. It doesn't matter what I ask you because you're going to stay with door number one, and it results in a loss this time again. We can apply the same kind of analysis if you always stick with door number two or door number three, and you'll see that you only win You only win if you've originally chosen the correct door. So we've got three wins out of nine, which comes out to a 33% chance of winning. And we've got six losses out of nine, which comes out to a 66% chance of losing. Now over here, I'm going to explain what happens when we always switch. So you've originally chosen door number one. I'm going to open up one of the two frog doors. It doesn't matter which. I'll open up door number two this time. I'll ask you whether you want to stick or switch, and you are always going to switch in these scenarios. So you've switched to door number three, and unfortunately that results in a loss this time. And in our next line, we've got your original choice of door number one. I'm going to open up the only other frog door, door number three. I'll ask you if you want to stick or switch. You switch to door number two, and you win a date with Prince or Princess Charming. And in scenario number three, it's the same thing. You've originally chosen door one. I'll open up the only other frog door, and you'll switch to door number three, and 
win a date in this scenario as well. So we can apply the same analysis again. A win, a loss, a win, a win, a win, and a last loss. So we can see here that you only lose three out of nine instead of six out of nine, resulting in approximately a 33% chance of losing. And when you always switch, you win six out of nine times, approximately 66% of the time. And so you can see that it is definitely beneficial to switch. When we look at this, we can see that this data is basically just telling us that the only way it's possible to lose in this situation is if you picked the prince or princess door the very first time, which was a 33% chance. And so the only way you can, the, the way you can win is by picking the frog door the original time, which is 66% of the chance. And so let's go see what Zach's results are. So over here, if we remember, Zach originally picked door number two, and I opened up door number three to reveal a frog. Now I'm going to, going to ask Zach one more question. Would you like to stick or switch? Switch. So Zach has decided to switch to door number one. For fun, let's open up door number two to see what he lost out on. He lost a frog, and which means door number one conceals a date with the prince or princess charming. Thank you for watching the Worldwide Center of Math Valentine's Day special. Click here behind door number one to visit our holiday playlist. Click behind door number two to subscribe to our channel for more math videos. And click behind door number three to visit centerofmath.org for more math resources.